I2C interrupt requests and interrupt mapping. In this lecture, let's talk about I2C interrupts. Let's refer to the reference manual, which is our good friend, to know how I2C interrupts are delivered to the NVIC of the processor. Always remember this, all the external peripheral interrupts must go via the NVIC to the processor core. It actually doesn't matter which microcontroller it is. Every microcontroller design must deliver its peripherals interrupts to the processor via the NVIC. If the microcontroller is based on ARM Cortex M4 processor. This diagram clarifies that I2C peripheral is capable of producing two interrupts. These two lines are going all the way to the NVIC block of the processor. This interrupt is for I2C events and this interrupt is for I2C errors. Unlike SPY, I2C has separate IRQ line interrupting the processor in the case of errors. These are the different events which can occur in I2C communication and these are the different errors which can occur during I2C communication. Here is a table which describes those events and errors. SB means start bit sent from the master or you can say start condition is generated. This event is applicable only to the master because master is the one who generates start condition. ADDR means address sent event or address match successful event in the case of slave. So these events are captured as an event flags in the status register of I2C. And if you enable these bits in the control register, then whenever these flags are set, they will interrupt the processor on this line. Also remember that these two flags that is receive buffer not empty and transmit buffer empty will generate the interrupt when both these two bits are enabled in the control register. You can see there is an AND gate over here. So both these two control bits must be enabled to get the interrupt in the case of TXE and RXN events. Okay, let's explore about error interrupt. There are different types of errors that may happen during I2C communication and these are respective flags which go high when the particular error happens. And if you enable this control bit, then setting off any of these flags will trigger an interrupt on this line. Some of the I2C specific errors are bus error. This error happens when the interface detects SDA rising or falling edge while clock is high occurring in a non-valid position during a byte transfer. Arbitration loss error can happen when the interface loses the arbitration of the bus to another master. ACK failure error happens when no ACK is returned for the byte sent. Overrun error will happen during reception when a new byte is received and the data register has not been read yet and the new received byte is lost. So whenever overrun error happens, it can be sure that at least one byte is lost. Underrun error will happen during transmission when a new byte should be sent and the data register has not been written yet and the same byte is sent twice. In I2C, since we have a clock stretching feature, we can easily prevent overrun error and underrun error happening. Pack error will happen when there is CRC mismatch if you have enabled the CRC feature. And the timeout error happens when master or slave uh, stretches the clock 
uh, by holding it low more than recommended amount of time what happens is that the i2c hardware will just reset itself and it issues the timeout error whenever uh, any of these error happens the corresponding flag will be set and interrupt the processor if this control bit is set 